guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you a review of a book that I recently finished called Raising Hell, Rethinking Everything You've Been Taught About God's Wrath and Judgment by Sharon L. Baker. And I bought this book in 2014 based on a recommendation from my one of my campus ministers in college. I went to see her at her office and I was asking her about hell and um, how we would reconcile it with our ideas of God that we learn about in my denomination, the Methodist Church, and she recommended this book. And I actually ended up using a gift card that I had gotten from for my birthday to buy this book because nothing says happy birthday to me like a book on hell. And then I just never got around to reading it. And I think part of it was because I was afraid I was going to have to, like, take a lot of notes and, like, do a lot of research to read this book. And as you can see, I did tab a lot of places. And I did have to look things up in my Bible verses she mentioned and things like that. So it did take me a, a long time to read this book because it's only, like, 220 pages and the last, like, 30 pages are her notes and references, so it did take me over a week to read this because of all the um, outside like reading and research you had to do. And this book is just Sharon L. Baker's attempt to reconcile the idea of a loving God and the traditional concept of hell. Of course, the traditional concept being that the vast majority of people go to hell and basically burn for all eternity. And Sharon L. Baker is a PhD in um, religion and theology, and she teaches at Messiah College, which is in Pennsylvania. So she is a professor, and she does have a PhD in theology. This book starts out by showing you the traditional um, version of hell. She, it talks about Dante's, you know, the seven circles of hell, and then in the start of each chapter, there's a quote from um, Dante's, you know, either the Inferno or the Paradise or the other one. I guess this is the Divine Comedy, and so it's just, it starts out by showing you the, the traditional version of hell, and then it talks about how that version of hell affects our view of God because you see God as vindictive and you see God as, you know, judging and you see God as, you know, being very, um, not very nice to the majority of the people in the world who he, whom he created and whom he supposedly loves. And you, and she talks about how, like, if you take this traditional view of hell and you compare it to like Hitler, Hitler killed like 11 million people and we hold him up to be this pinnacle of evil. But when you compare it to God, uh, that would mean that God is torturing people, billions of people forever. And that would make him like way worse than Hitler. And is that really a God you want to worship? And, and so she brings that around to this new idea of a hell where everybody goes through the fire, but it's only a temporary thing. It's like a purging, you know, you get the the bad parts of you taken out by the fire, and then you're able to reconcile with God and with Jesus. And if you choose not to reconcile, then the concept of, of annihilation comes into play, and that is just where you basically cease to exist if you don't accept God. And of course, there are some like issues in the book because for example, is it really free will if your only options are reconciling with God or going and ceasing to exist? And then she talked a lot about the Bible and how there's all those passages in the Old Testament, specifically where God kills like thousands of people, even women and children, or like the famous story of when they're carrying the Ark of the Covenant and you know, you're not supposed to touch it, but what it's about to fall, and one of the soldiers steps out of line and tries to help them ride it, and is instantly struck dead by God, and so she tries to reconcile that, but again, it's kind of, she doesn't do that great of a job of explaining it, or reconciling it, because of course you can't really know for sure what God's intentions are, just like you can't know for sure what hell is really going to be like until you get there. And so, I mean, this is all just her personal opinion. And yes, it's based on research she's done and, you know, things she's learned throughout her career, but it is just speculation overall. 
And this is not a strictly academic academic book. Like she doesn't use footnotes and she doesn't tell you like every single source she used in the references. This is based on this is sort of centered on conversations she's she's had with people in her life, specifically three people, Lisa, Brooke and Eric, and Lisa and Eric or no, Brooke and Eric are students of hers, and then Lisa is a really good friend of hers. And so it's all about they converse, and then she sort of brings their insights into the book and supplements them with academic knowledge and academic resources that she's found through her research. And I enjoyed this book, or I don't know if I enjoy is the right word because it's based on you know, hell, but I learned a lot from this book, and one of the things I learned that it was particularly interesting was when Jesus is talking about hell in the New Testament, you know, he uses several different words, but we all translate them all to be hell, and of course, we think of them all as like the Dante version of hell, but when he was talking about hell, some of the times, the, the word that is used is Gehenna, and Gehenna is a real place in outside of Jerusalem, and it was basically their dump, and it was like full of trash, and it was there was never indeed fires because like people would burn their trash, and but the fire would never go out, and so sometimes when he's talking about hell, he's talking about this physical place Gehenna, which is really interesting, and there was a couple other things like that, where you learned words that you had never heard of. And there are a lot, like, even though this is written for someone who doesn't have a theological education, there are a lot of terms, you know, like atonement, and there's a lot of R words, like redemption, and reconciliation, and renewal, and revival, and, you know, all these R words that they kind of blend together. And it's very, it's a very interesting book, though, and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking to reconcile the idea of a loving God with the traditional versions of hell. And I also want to mention, the reason she thinks it's so important to understand, or to at least to attempt to understand the true nature of hell, is because that affects how you live on earth here. Um, for example, if you think God is vindictive and that God is going to eternally punish people, then you have no problem punishing them here on earth because you feel like you're just doing what God is going to do in a lesser manner. And so you're like, oh yeah, I can do whatever I want to the people who cross me because they're obviously going to hell anyway, so might as well start the punishment early. And she's saying, if you see this as as how as something that you go through temporarily in order to become refined so that you could go be in heaven with God, then that changes the way you think of hell and that changes, that should change your actions here on earth and change how you treat people and change how you bring the kingdom of God to earth. And she also mentions the fact that, you know, a lot of times in evangelism, you know, people try to threaten people with hell and like they're like if you die tonight where would you go and you know things like that and she's saying if you see hell as a temporary thing then you can focus on bringing people joy here on this earth and showing them what Jesus can do here on for them here on this earth and it's really a great read and I really enjoyed it I'm definitely going to keep it and I would see myself referencing it in the future and maybe even rereading it someday in the future. Um, I highly, highly recommend this, as, as I said, if you're looking to reconcile the concept of a loving God with the traditional versions of hell. Um, I just found it really fascinating and I am actually planning to read Rob Bell's book called Love Wins, which is also about um, hell and like his version of what do you think hell is like? So I might compare these two books if I read Love Wins soon enough to have to still retain a lot of what's in this book. So yeah, um, if you've read this or if you're interested in reading this, let me know. I'd love to talk to you in the comments about your version of hell or what you've been taught about hell or whether you think hell is a real place or whatever you want to throw down in the comments about hell. I'm uh, we're talking about it. Um, I hope y'all are having a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!